afternoon, everyone. Well, good afternoon. We promised that the day would come when arrests would be made in the Pike County massacres. Today is that day. Yesterday, a Pike County grand jury indicted four individuals for aggravated murder with death penalty specifications. George Billy Wagner III, his wife Angela Wagner, and their sons, George Wagner IV and Edward Jake Wagner. After an extensive, thorough joint investigation by the Attorney General's Office, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, as well as our special prosecution section and Pike County Sheriff Charles Reeder's office. These four individuals are now in custody for allegedly committing this heartless, ruthless, cold-blooded murder. These are the faces of the victims, an entire family and members of their extended family massacred. Many of them were killed as they slept. They are Christopher Roden Sr., age 40. His ex-wife, Dana Manley Roden, age 37. Their children, Hannah Mae Roden, age 19. Christopher Roden Jr., age 16. Clarence Frankie Roden, age 20 and his fiancée, Hannah Hazel Gilly, age 20. Further, Christopher Roden's brother, Kenneth Roden, age 44. Their cousin, Gary Roden, age 38. All eight victims were killed in cold blood. They were shot in their own homes. They were brutally and viciously executed. The killers knew the territory and meticulously planned these horrendous murders. The eight victims left behind an extended grief-stricken family, including four young children. Thankfully, in their only show of mercy, the killers spared the three children at the scenes, children then ages three years of age, six months, and five days. At the center of this case were members of one family whom we believe the evidence will show conspired together to kill these eight people, eight of their friends. Four members of the Wagner family, a husband, a wife, their two adult sons, are all now facing numerous charges, including eight counts of aggravated murder each, one count for each victim. The aggravated murder charges also include death penalty specifications for all four suspects. Now, because this is an open prosecution, we won't be able to say much about motive, but you'll see from the indictments that custody of that young child plays a role in this case. We believe that the Wagners conspired together to develop an elaborate plan to kill the eight victims under the cover of darkness and then carefully cover up their tracks. We believe the evidence will show that the suspects spent months planning the crimes. They studied the victims' habits and their routines. They knew the layouts of their homes. They knew where they slept. And then after executing each victim, we believe the evidence will further show 
that the suspects tampered with the evidence, such as the victim's phones and the surveillance cameras on their properties. Now, as in all killings, even those that are methodically planned, mistakes are made. And it's our job to find those mistakes. We've been gathering evidence in this case for about two and a half years. In July of this year, at the request of prosecutors with my office's special prosecution section, along with the Pike County prosecuting attorney, Rob Junk, a judge impaneled an investigative grand jury to meet regularly to examine all the evidence we had collected over the course of the investigation and further to gather additional evidence. This investigation began the day of the murders. And with investigators discovering the last piece of significant physical evidence on October 30th of this year. The examination of that evidence was completed a few days later on November 7th. This particular evidence, along with all the other pieces of this giant puzzle, all the other key evidence in this investigation, have led us to today's charges and arrests. In addition to aggravated murder, these four family members are also charged with a number of other offenses. They include conspiracy, engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity, aggravated burglary for allegedly breaking into the rodent's home to commit the crimes, tampering with evidence, unlawful possession of a dangerous ordinance, unauthorized use of property, interception of wire, oral or electronic communications, and finally, obstruction of justice. The four suspects are also all facing charges of forgery for allegedly forging child custody documents. Two other people, two other people, were also arrested today in conjunction with the cover-up of these crimes. And let me again emphasize, these two individuals were arrested in regard to the cover-up of these crimes. Angela's mother, Rita Newcomb, and Billy's mother, Frederica Wagner. The charges against these two suspects relate to their alleged actions to mislead our authorities. Let me just take a moment to thank everyone who's been involved in this investigation. Without question, this has been by far the longest, most complex and labor-intensive investigation the Ohio Attorney General's Office has ever undertaken. It's been the most sophisticated, the biggest operation BCI has ever undertaken. Our investigators, our analysts, have lived this case, have lived it. It has been all-consuming for them. But each one of us pledged never to give up. And now as day has gone by, that we've not thought about the Roden family, the Gilly families, and the Manley families. Our team of state and local investigators and prosecutors has been unconditionally dedicated to solving this case. They sacrificed time with their own families in pursuit of justice for the families of the victims. From the arrival of our BCI crime scene units on the morning of April 22, 2016, to now, we have never stopped working towards justice for the victims. And I asked my team to do uh, an estimate, and this is all it really is, of the amount of time that was spent in this investigation. This would include the time of the Sheriff's Office. This would include the time of BCI. This would include our investigators. This would include our lab. And it was tens of thousands of hours. No way really to know exactly. We have followed more than 1,100 tips from the public. We conducted 550 interviews, served more than 200 subpoenas, search warrants, and court orders, and tested more than 700 items of evidence. 
The team also traveled thousands of miles to set to 10 separate states as a direct result of this investigation. That includes some very significant time in Alaska where the Wagner family moved before coming back to Pike County. Our team used innovative new technology. Well, let, let me just tell you, what solved this case was just hard, tough police work day after day after day. These men and women never gave up. They were as frustrated as we all were. They wanted to solve the case immediately. But they continued to work and put the pieces of the puzzle together. We always felt from the beginning that the perpetrators were very familiar with the victims in their homes, and the Wagners certainly were. To the Roden family, the Manley family, the Gilly families, I know that the past two and a half years has been very, very tough, agonizing. And frankly, none of us really understand how tough it has been for them. We appreciate your patience. We appreciate that very much. We appreciate your faith in us and the process. It has been our job to find the truth. We have done that painstakingly month after month after month. And that has all led to today. This, of course, is not the end. Whether, it's an, whether it is a new day in this case, as we work to, to hold those allegedly co co who committed these unspeakable murders accountable and get a measure of justice, a measure of justice for the victims as we take this case to trial in Pike County Common Pleas Court. I want to get, again thank all the investigators, all the analysts, Everyone who has worked on this case and the, pro and the prosecuting attorneys for their steadfast determination to solve the crime. They never wavered. They never gave up. They always thought they could solve it. I would also stress that we would not be here today without the help of a long, long list of local, state, and federal agencies that provide assistance with this case. More than four dozen agencies provided some support in this investigation. This was truly, truly a collaborative effort. Let me just say that Sheriff Reeder has been a great partner. And from the very beginning, literally from that morning, when the sheriff called us, this has been a true partnership. It's been a true partnership with the sheriff, but also with the men and women of his department. And I would like now to invite the sheriff to come up uh, and, and make some comments. Once again, I would like to let the family members know that my thoughts and prayers are with them as they have been daily since April 22nd of 2016. I'd only been sheriff of Pike County less than a year before April 22nd of 2016. And that day changed a lot of our lives, including mine. The images of the houses, the bodies, the scenes, I can never erase them. Even 20 years of law enforcement experience cannot prepare you fully for a day like that day. Every single day since that day I have worked, we have worked <coughs> as a team to figure out who did this in Pike County where I have spent my entire life. We have obsessively focused on solving this case. We have been patient when it was painful to be, running down every lead no matter how small. But it all has brought us to this day. Today we have the answer. 
members of one family conspired, planned, carried out, and then allegedly covered up their violent act to wipe out members of another family. They did this quickly, coldly, calmly, and very carefully, but not carefully enough. They left traces. They left a trail. The parts to build a silencer, the forged documents, the cameras, cell phones, all that they tampered with, and the lies, all the lies they told us. I want to thank the High Attorney General, now Governor-elect Mike DeWine. When this first happened, I responded to that horrific crime. I made several calls. One was to the Attorney General's office asking <coughs> for assistance. One was to my Major Dave Roos asking for prayers. And the other was asking for the victim services from the High Attorney General's office. Because it was something that I knew I had never dealt with. And certainly anyone coming before me or behind me hadn't. And he made a promise that he would stay here in Pike County. They would not go. They'd not leave us. They'd be here to the end. And today that man stands beside me once again to let you know that that day has come. That the arrest have been made. The team went nowhere. They stayed here. And they took care of Pike County like they said they would. He has been a leader I want to be by my own side in an investigation like this and in the journey for justice. He and his prosecutors, along with his team at the High Bureau of Criminal Investigations, pledged their commitment and resources on day one. And as you see, continue to show that. Pike County is a resilient community, very small. I know it's been tough to be known as the place where eight people were murdered, but we are much, much more than that. We are a place that doesn't let cowardly murderers get away with their crimes under the cover of darkness. We are the place that finds justice for victims, and today is a big step on that path. <clears throat> we will continue to welcome any tips and information anyone may have. If you have any tips or information, I urge you to call the 1855 BCI Ohio or the Pike County Sheriff's Office, 740 947 2111. Today is a very good day, a brighter day here in Pike County. Thank you. Let me now introduce uh, Rob Junk, who is the county prosecuting attorney. Uh, he has been with us uh, since day one as well. Rob. Thank you, General Dwight. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pike County Prosecutor Rob Junk. I want everyone to take a minute <clears throat> and remember what these cases are actually about. There are eight members of the Roden, Gilly, and Manley families brutally murdered in the middle of the night on April 22nd, 2016, our sympathies continue to be with our loved ones. First, I'd like to thank Attorney General Mike DeWine for the assistance he has extended to Pike County during the investigation of these Roden Gilly Manley homicides. He and his staff, especially the BCI agents, the men and women of BCI, and their analysts, and their attorneys in the Special Prosecutions Unit, have been invaluable to us here in Pike County. I also want to extend a thanks to all the other law enforcement agencies who assisted us as well. We're a small county with correspondingly small staff and budgets. And this investigation would not have been possible without Attorney General DeWine's and his office's assistance. I want to thank the BCI agents and an analysts who spent this countless hours working on the case and never gave up. I'd also like to recognize Major Al Lewis of the Pike County Sheriff's Office who recently retired and wanted to finish this case out. He spent the same amount of time as the agents and analysts and was with it for day one. He was an integ integral part of it and there from the beginning. And now that this investigation has concluded and these indictments have been issued, you know, we now enter the prosecution phase. And the issuance of an indictment by the grand jury, I do need to emphasize, is merely a formal accusation. All these defendants under the law 
are presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I want to emphasize to everyone that this will be a long process. We have four defendants charged with the homicide of eight victims, and all four of them with <coughs> death penalty specifications. We have two other defendants who are charged with assisting these offenses, covering them up. And I would indicate to you that it would most likely be several years before all these cases are concluded to trial at the court level. This has been one of the most complicated and extensive investigations in Ohio history with a corresponding amount of potential witnesses and evidence. There is a lot of hard work ahead of us. I cannot emphasize that enough. An indictment is only the beginning of the case. There will be numerous hearings and motions that we will need to fight through before any of these cases go to trial. And we as prosecutors and investigators are limited by law as far as what we can talk about to you. We can't talk about any evidence or details about these cases. I would ask that everyone bear with us because of this. And once these cases have been prosecuted to conclusion, we will be able to speak freely to you. In the meantime, I would ask everyone to please remember the Roden, Gillian, Manley families. No one can truly know the pain and anguish that they've suffered. Please keep them in their prayers. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just a couple more comments. Um, one thing I think for the citizens of Pike County uh, in this part of the state that we should point out, we have absolutely no evidence that anyone else is involved. Um, we have absolutely no evidence that anyone else is involved except the individuals who are arrested today. I also want to reiterate uh, what the prosecuting attorney said. Uh, these are all allegations, and we always must say this. The defendants who are arrested today are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Uh, this case will be prosecuted by prosecuting attorney Junk and special prosecutors from the Ohio Attorney General's office. Um, they will, of course, be working. Uh, with Ohio's new Attorney General, Dave Yost, uh, who I briefed uh, several hours ago in regard to these arrests and who will receive a more thorough briefing uh, in, the next, in the next few days. Uh, we're more than happy to respond to any uh, questions Mike, anybody Mike, has. Where is, where is Sophie? Sophia right now, the little, the little girl? Uh, my understanding uh, is that Children's Services is involved, and that's really all I, all I can say. Mike, that last key piece of evidence you alluded to that was found on October the 30th, can you at least give us an idea about the type yeah. of evidence we're talking uh, about? It was physical evidence. Um, I don't really want to go into that further, but let me really be clear. Um, this is not a situation where you had one additional piece of evidence that was tipped the case. This is a cumulative process. This has been a, a, a very meticulous putting together of the pieces of the puzzle. And, and for many of you, I <laughs> used this example in the past. It is like a thousand piece puzzle. Um, and you just literally, because we had no witnesses, everybody who was a witness was dead. And so you start with nothing and you start putting those pieces together. So this was one more piece. I wanted to make sure I gave you the dates so that everyone understood this was a continuing process. Have you spoken to any members so of the family? Right here. What do you know about why the Wagners moved back from Alaska? I, I can't comment on that. Have you spoken to any members of the Rosen family or Gilly families? Yeah, we met, uh, <clears throat> the sheriff and I and the prosecutor uh, just met a few minutes ago with, with many of the members of the family. We wanted to talk directly to them. As you may recall, we've met with them on, on a number of occasions in the past. Uh, we wanted them to hear it from us uh, before we actually held this press conference. Attorney General, how did the Wagners conduct themselves when they were arrested today? Uh, you'd have to ask the sheriff that. I have here the places that they were arrested. And I could, I'm, way, sure. I'm very thankful 
that I can report to you that the arrest went out went without incident. Uh, no one was injured, neither suspect nor law enforcement, and that the children um, were fine. And again, children services are taking care of, of the children. Um, George Billy Wagner was arrested in Fayette County, Kentucky this morning after several of my units and some BCI agents um, basically followed him uh, where he arrived in Kentucky and we reached out to the Fayette County, Kentucky Sheriff's Office and they assisted in that stop where he was apprehended without incident. Angela Wagner was arrested at her home in Soda County. George Wagner, Jake R Wagner was arrested in a traffic stop on 35 in Ross County without incident. They were together. Rita Newcomb had left her residence and returned and then was arrested by units there on that scene. And prior to me arriving, we just left the Fred Wika Wagner's residence where um, she was arrested and taken into custody. I believe at this time, all those that have been arrested have been transported to different facilities and have arrived there and are now incarcerated. When will they be here in court? That I don't know. Uh, again, we're really limited in what we should be saying. Uh, we're under the duty to assure that these individuals have a fair trial. Uh, but I will reiterate, it was meticulously planned. Uh, they knew what they were doing. They thought about it. They executed it. Um, that's it. They did it. I wouldn't want to put a time on that, but it, it, it had been, uh, <clears throat> they had planned it out. Sheriff they had thought about it a lot. But Sheriff and Attorney General, um, there was much made back when these homicides occurred of the drug operations that were being run from two of these homes, perhaps, <clears throat> marijuana that was found, uh, whether they were or were not running a dog fighting ring. Is there anything you can do to maybe alleviate some of the reputation, some of the damage that might have been done to the to the Rodents well, and Manleys? Well, let me, let me just, l l <laughs> um, when you say much was made of it, uh, we tried to give the news media an accurate description of what we saw, and um, we did that. Uh, we could not control, uh, nor were we in a position to deny um, speculation that's gone on for the last two and a half years about drug gangs coming in, the Mexican drug cartel, and all of those things. If you'll notice, we've been pretty careful about what we, we, have, we have said. Um, so can you say definitively, though, that those things played no role, if, if anything was happening, that, that, it, that they played no role here to help the reputation of this family? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to be careful how I that I'm accurate in what, what I say. Um, you have part of the, the relationship that was going on uh, with some of the individuals involved. Yeah, there, 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 was, there was an undercurrent of drugs. Uh, there's, there's no evidence of all the speculation that this was drug, necessarily drug related in the sense the motive, but uh, there was there's an undercurrent there, and I want to be very careful because the, the, the prosecutors are going to have to present the case at, at, at trial, and I don't want to say something here that uh, it is so. There's an undercurrent of drugs. Yeah, there's an undercurrent there of drugs, and it's. Governor Sheriff here. Was Frederica Wagner arrested at the Flying W? We saw your SWAT teams just barrel through those cast iron gates, which they had only padlocked minutes before you came around the corner. We didn't have a key. Did he want yes, she was the only one that was there. She was the only one? No sure other kids stopped. on the property? No one else. And I would like to touch on, follow up <coughs> on yours. You know, as far as what we had reported, and we were very careful and very considerate of a family, of three families that lost eight members. 
And I know how it affected me in, in this community, the, the shockwave. My office, my deputies, those law enforcement come in to help us. And I could only imagine with the effect that it had on us, what it had on the family. And back then, I was very clear in the fact that regardless of what we found, regardless of what aerial views that were showed, reported, that no one, no one deserved in the dark of the night for cowards to come in while sleeping and execute them in a way that would be unbelievable to anyone, including law enforcement. So regardless of if we found marijuana on the property, the vehicles, everything that we've done, we've done because of the victims had no voice and were their voice now. Every, every, everybody that's investigated the case, we were working an eight-person homicide, not a marijuana grow room. And I believe today, as I did back then, that they deserve more respect because they are true victims of a heinous crime that's never been seen before than to now speak of. We're talking about arresting the people responsible for murdering eight people in this county. We're not talking about those eight people having marijuana growth. And I, I think in two and a half years we can get over that. Yes? I just wanted to know, when you met with the rodents today, you and, and Mr. DeWine, what was that like for you after so long? And, and can you tell how, what did they say? How, how are they? Well, how any human being would be. Um, today's a great day. We, we told, I said we were coming. And when I said that, I meant it. Mm -hmm. And this staff has made sure that they've never missed a beat. And they've headed that direction for two and a half years. And today's the day that we've made the arrest. To finally look at a family that had questions that you can finally answer still have questions that you can't to finally let them know that today is the day and they have some justice today that's great but as I explained to the family I worked for the prosecutor for six and a half years so now it's time for prosecution to begin so will they have justice yes are they still gonna miss birthdays Christmas Thanksgiving Easter are they still gonna miss all those special times together there's nothing we can do there's nothing so great that we can do to give those eight people back. We can't. And that's going to be the only thing that will give them the, the true, what they want, because we're human beings and that's what we want. But we've done what we can for them. We've met with them first out of, out of complete respect for the family and what they've been through. They've lost other loved ones waiting on this investigation. I can't make time stand still. Neither could the investigative staff. We're here today. We can be sincere, we can, we can keep them alerted to what we're doing, we can keep them apprised, like the prosecutor said, on the, invested, on the uh, uh, prosecution end of it, of what to expect next, what, what's gonna be filed. Uh, like 100 motions, I believe the prosecutor spoke of. You know, so in my heart, it crushes me that, yes, I can look at them today and I can, I can be happy, the team's done great. We're here today with you saying the people's in jail. We've got them. But now we begin the prosecution side of this, and now the family's gonna have to wait again. They're gonna want answers again. They're not gonna understand some of the things that goes through the court process, because prosecutors do that, not us. And again, I feel that they're gonna be victimized because they've gotta be at court instead of at home together. They've, they've, they've gotta see this again tonight. You know, you guys are doing what you do, we do what we do, and I appreciate you greatly, but the family gets to see this again two and a half years later, reminded of eight lives lost way too soon, reminded of everything that they've gone through, reminded they've lost more waiting for this than never got to see this. And they feel guilty about that, and so do I. But in the end, that's what I believe when talking to them. I wanted to prepare them. Yes, today it's a great day. Just, justice is here. But it's going to be much, much sweeter when the prosecution's done. But in that, they're going to have to get through a whole lot to reach that stage. They're going to endure much more time than they've endured already. Sure. The, the Wagner family attorney has said the Wagners look forward to their day in court uh, and that they hope that the true culprits of this crime are finally apprehended. And so, Attorney General, first, want to ask you uh, to reiterate, to be clear, there's no 
no one else that you have is suspect in this. And could you share what Attorney General Electio's reaction was when you spoke with him today? Uh, the Attorney General Elect Yost was happy uh, and congratulated the team. And I don't have any comments in regard to what a defense attorney said. Um, I'll go back and what I said before, and, and I think this is important for the people of Pike County uh, in this part of the state, that we have absolutely no evidence that anyone else was involved. The people who did it are in custody. No, I, I'm not going to go into that. Um, what, what I will say is this is, <clears throat> you know, they clearly have been the prime suspects for some time. Um, you know, cases sort of take on a life of their own. Um, they have to evolve. You can't rush them. <clears throat> You've got to go where the evidence is. Uh, and, you know, we continued to gather evidence, as I said, up until, you know, a few days ago. So it's a cumulative, cumulative process. But they certainly were the prime suspects for some time, but we've continued to gather evidence since then. I know that you said that you're limited in what you can say, and I understand that. But as far as the... Wish I wasn't, but I well, am. Well, I wish you weren't either. I wish you could tell us everything. <clears throat> but um, as far as the people who were actually at the crime scene that night, um, was Angela part of this? Was she at home with the kids? I'm not going to comment. I can't comment on that. Okay. Yeah, the, the, look, the, look, the, look, the, look, look, the, in, the indictment, you all can get copies of the indictment. Uh, we can make that available if they've not been made available already. And um, you, can, you can look at the exact the language in the, in the indictment. Can you speak about the rationale of not naming the Wagner as persons of interest, considering there were early suspects? I didn't say they were early suspects. Uh, what I said was they've been suspects for some time. This has been a two-and-a-half-year investigation. Um, you know, these were decisions uh, that, we, that we made. Uh, and as I said, every single decision we made, every major decision we made, every decision we made, uh, was focused on finding who did it, finding the truth, and being able to successfully prosecute a case. Well, there was some forensic evidence at the scene, and again, one of the things that we're cautioning as prosecutors uh, is to not really talk about the evidence, so I'm not going to do that. What I will simply say is that, um, you know, they were careful uh, when they committed these horrendous murders. They were, they were clearly planned um, and were executed very carefully. Jeffrey, can you speak to uh I understand there were threats made against you and your wife and your kids, essentially a target on your head from the Wagners. Is that true? Can you speak to anything? I, I can say that I had no direct Microphone. threat from them. Speak up. Unless you're there, sure. I had no direct threat from them to me. Um, being a sheriff and having a case like this, uh, you use caution. Uh, I've seen their work. I know what they're capable of. So uh, we've been very cautious, making sure that uh, – Security plans have been in place in my home and others, and uh, you know we're still relevant today. They're all in jail. I'm very pleased. As the custody issue, is that at the epicenter of a motive here? I, it was part of your struggle with your plea, your struggle for so long to understand why, what, what could possibly motivate someone to do this. Is that, is that at the epicenter of this? <clears throat> yeah, again, we have to be careful what we say, but uh, there certainly was obsession um, with custody, obsession with control of children. Um, I just might tell you this is just the most bizarre story uh, I've ever seen in being involved in, in law enforcement. I mean, when, when the entire story, as it will unfold at trial, uh, it is just, it, it's, just un it's just amazing. Well, you can draw your own conclusions to that. I, I don't want to 
speculate there. Um, with regard to the other two arrests, can you elaborate at all about what, what is alleged that they, they did to, to try to cover up? No, no. This has to do with cover up. Again, I'll just reiterate it. It does not have to do with the murder itself. It has to do with, 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 with covering up. And just, just to be clear, that those are the two grandmothers? That would be correct. Quick question. For yeah, it's two grandmothers. It is indeed. Well, I, I really am not going to say much, much more than that. Uh, there's a fixation. Uh, there's a question of control. Um, you know, I really, really, uh, I'm not going to get in further into it. Quick question for Mr. Junk, sir. Can you sir. explain the, uh, the bonds process right now, if there is one, or the situation in the next step? I understand you can't give a detailed timeline, right. but just to lay out the next step. At this point, how things work is we'll be making arrangements with the Pike County Court of Common Pleas to have each of our defendants have a uh, initial appearance through the court, be in front of uh, Judge Randy D. Deering. And how bond works under the law, it is possible to hold an individual who is charged with capital murder with no bond. The court has its own bond schedule. It usually refers to in other types of cases. Obviously, uh, we will be there in court uh, arguing bond uh, whenever that happens. Right now, we don't have a time frame for you, but I imagine it would be in the next few days. That's one of the things we need to do, actually, when uh, we're done with this, is work on the scheduling on that as well, too. They're also with uh, the defendant in Kentucky. There will need to be extradition hearings involved as well, too, before he's brought up in before our court. Let, let me just add one. I would just add one additional thing. It's my understanding that uh, lawyers representing them would have to be uh, death penalty qualified. So it would have to be the right lawyers. Um, this may may delay that a little bit. Uh, I don't know that, but it could. Have you completed your searches of all the properties involved here? Or will there still be more reasons to go back on each individual property and, and re-examine them? Well, I, I don't think it would be wise ever to say that we would not go back and do further investigation. So I can't give you anybody that, that guarantee about anything. I just, you know, I don't think that would be wise to, to say that when we don't know that. Obviously, uh, death penalty cases are very expensive, and there's going to be four of them here. Um, there's going to be governor. Will the state be able to help out with those costs? As Sheriff Reader pointed out, Small community, small staff, small budget. Yeah, that this, look, this is a problem, <laughs> and it's a much bigger problem than Pike County's problem, but it's acerbated by the, by the fact, the nature of the, these, these cases. We have four individuals. Pike County is a small county. Uh, we clearly uh, have to do something in Ohio to make sure these counties have the ability to carry out justice. Uh, and I'll just I'll let it go with that, but it's certainly been a concern of mine uh, before the Pike County case but it's been really uh, driven home to me during the last two and a half years. Um, you know, Pike County has received some help, but it's still been a huge burden on Pike County. Um, and the, tr the trying of capital cases certainly is. Given how small the community is and how big this case is, Prosecutor, are you confident you can impanel a jury here in Pike County? Actually, that is a very good question. And that is actually a question I'm not able to answer um, with a yes at this point, too. That will be a determination by a judge at some point, and uh, that is a very good point to bring up as well, too, that this case has received more publicity than anything we've ever had in the county, so it may very well need to be moved to another county, but that is actually a determination that will be made in the uh, future at this point. But wouldn't their attorney more than likely request that change of venue? The judge wouldn't just no. Normally, the, de the defense attorneys would have to ask for that. Hey, Rob. Yes, Dave. Right. Okay. I was going to say, I'm usually not used to using an amplifying microphone, so I do <laughs> apologize for that. Uh, the ones I talk into record my voice in court, and that is about it, so I do apologize. But uh, you are correct. The defense attorneys would usually make that motion. It comes down to the fact that regardless of what someone has done or been charged with, the Constitution, 
does require the right to a fair trial. There could possibly be fair trial issues if everyone in the community has heard of a case. So that is a possibility, but I really wouldn't want to speculate what a judge would do at this point. But um, I'm sure that's a determination that will be made. Will anyone receive a capture warrant in this case? There has been one. That's, that's not been determined yet. Is it possible? I mean, it, well, first of all, that will be that determination would be made by the folks who put the award up and reward up, and we would the investigators would cooperate with them on that. But that's we've not really thought about that. And then, Mike, what message would you say to anyone here in Pike County or surrounding counties? You know, every time we've tried to talk to somebody who might know the family or know something about what happened, there's been this just abject fear countywide to say anything to anybody because of fear of retribution. So what could you say now that you have these four in custody that could put people's minds at ease tonight to even um, open up about this story? Yeah, we, we believe we, ha <clears throat> excuse me, we believe we have the killers. We don't believe anybody else is involved. We have absolutely no evidence that anybody else is involved. And, you know, we want to make that very, very clear to the people of, of Pike County. Uh, these arrests were all coordinated today. They occurred today within a very short period of time of each other. Um, that would be my message to the people of Pike County. Excuse me. I have no idea. The only thing I know he was doing in Kentucky was being arrested. <laughs> I don't know why he went to Kentucky. Do you have any evidence that he knew you were coming and was trying to? No, ma'am. Okay. So this was a total surprise to them. Absolutely. Hadn't they said in the past that they would never be taken down alive, that it would be a firefight to the end? I'm not aware of that. I have no idea. Okay. Not aware of that at all. No. Anybody else? Were the suspects to be kept apart from each other while in jail, in custody? That's my intention, yes. Anybody else? Where are they currently incarcerated at, the ones that are in Ohio? Wow. Hold uh, on a little second here. Pickaway County, Franklin County, Pickaway, Franklin, Ross, Delaware, Butler. Butler. He missed that boat because he's in Kentucky. When he's done with, when we actually him back, he'll be in Butler, and then uh, one other. There's six six places. One place has two. Pickaway has two. Sheriff, will you be able to make? Um, digital mug shots available to us? Will, that, will those come from your office once they've all been processed and you have those? I'll make sure that uh, Chief Bentley helps you with that. That's fine. Yes. And then copies of the indictment that were referenced? We have those. Okay. We'll get you those. Thanks, sir. Anybody else? Just to be clear, all four Wagners went to Alaska. Can you say when they came back? I know earlier there was a question about why they came back. You couldn't answer that, but can you say when? Well, we do have that date. Um, I'm not sure I know the date. But we could get it and provide it. Spring. Spring. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Any of the suspects have weapons at the time of their arrest? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Again, we appreciate all your help on this. Okay, so that's fine. Those are yours, Sheriff. And then below mine. Switch over. Switch over audio. You got mic There we are. We're doing it. We're getting the shots set. Yeah, we're locked on. Are we? I'm ready. We're up. We're up. You got me, Rob. I fixed it. Lee fixed it. It's going to be a million people talking. Lee says he has fixed it. Can you